our world and beyond space in partnership with the European Space Agency. It's the dress rehearsal at the Russian Institute for Biomedical Problems in Moscow. These are the final preparations before the full-length simulated mission to Mars begins. My name is Diego Urbina. I've just turned 27. I come from Turin, Italy. I'm Italian and Colombian. I'm an electronics engineer specializing in space studies, and I'm part of the crew of Mars 500. Specially developed space suits are one of the unique features of this international experiment, which includes, for the first time, a mock-up Mars landing, as well as the long-term crew isolation studied previously. It's a really claustrophobic experience. Oh, it is. It's very nice. Very exciting. Claustrophobics would not enjoy spending 520 days, the presumed duration of a return flight to Mars, inside this airtight research module, relying on many of the same life support systems that would be used on a real rocket to Mars. This experiment we do here is a very good way to kind of give us ideas how we need to prepare the crews who eventually will go to Mars. And that, that's uh, really crucial when we send people to space, whether it's a two weeks flight, which I did twice, or if it's a half a year in space station, or it will be one and a half years to Mars. We need to have an idea what do they need to know so we can prepare them. Out of hundreds of volunteers, a crew of six has been selected. Three Russians, a Chinese, and two Europeans. I'm called Romain Charles, I'm 30 years old, I'm French and I'm an engineer in the car industry. In the weeks before the joint experiment of IBMP and the European Space Agency starts on June the 3rd, the crew members were trained to use the research equipment they will use during the 520-day simulated flight. You have a lot of experience, que ce soit we will be doing lots of experiments. Some are to do with physiology, others with skills like this one. Here I'm learning to dock a Soyuz in the International Space Station without crashing the spaceship. But the aim is, in fact, to monitor my stress reaction to the docking, to check my concentration and what factors play a part. That will mean they can determine what level of tiredness or lack of concentration is dangerous. Then they can stop me before I take a spaceship and crash it into the ISS. Of course, here it's not real. But Mars 500 is not just about testing new self-training and life support systems. It's mainly an extreme test of human endurance, something which has been investigated by Russian biomedics since Soviet times. A manned flight to Mars was for many years a strategic goal of the Soviet space program. When we flew aboard the Mir station, it was no bigger than this mock-up behind me. All the other modules were expected to arrive later. The intention was to assemble a prototype heavy spaceship to go to Mars. That is why the modules were autonomous. The life support systems were capable, for example, of extracting water from atmospheric moisture or converting human waste, such as urine, into oxygen and drinking water. Because a flight to Mars will be so long, you can't rely entirely on supplies stored aboard. No rocket will be powerful enough to carry all the stocks you'll need. One of the main proponents of the Soviet Mars program, Valery Polyakov, wanted to prove that it was possible to stay healthy in space long enough to make interplanetary journeys. On his second Mir mission, he spent 437 days in orbit, the longest space flight ever made. What would be more difficult going to uh, Mars is uh, two things. First of all, you don't have the closeness to the Earth. I mean, one of the things you really enjoy on the ISS is that you can see the Earth down there and it's so beautiful all the time. And while going to Mars, you soon will see Earth just as a little uh, dot in the sky. And that will make it, I think, the isolation you'll feel will be much uh, harder. And then you don't have the same 
uh, easy way to communicate. You will have a time delay in signals which will build up over the time you fly there and eventually uh, reach as much as 20 minutes for a one-way signal. The 20 minute communication lag between Earth and a space rocket will be recreated for the Mars 500 crew to add to the psychological effect of isolation. A factor that it's hoped will be alleviated by the crew's intense workload. When they talk about psychological stress, they mean it's very difficult to stay there in relative isolation from society, seeing nobody except your crew facing sensory deprivation, lack of stimuli, and so on and so forth. But you have to keep in mind that you're conducting two to three experiments every day, and sometimes by the evening your eyes can't see anymore because of the microscope, and suddenly you remember that you didn't shave, didn't have breakfast, lunch or supper. And just imagine, if such work keeps you busy every day, you won't have any time for depression. That's the importance of workload. And on the flight to Mars, there will be enough vessel servicing and research programs to occupy the crew. An isolation experiment on this unprecedented scale is an exciting opportunity for researchers. International groups of them competed to study the effects of being in such an enclosed environment for such a long time. Lots of specialists are taking part in this study. Experts in medicine, physiology, microbiology, hygiene, psychology and other professionals from biomedical and other related fields of knowledge. The goal is to conduct 105 experiments within this project. The crew will be living under constant surveillance for the whole 18 months via cameras and other monitoring devices. One of the experiments involves these watches. They record every movement throughout the day. They also record ambient light, so they know if it's day or night, if we're sleeping or not. Another interesting thing is that these watches communicate with each other, meaning they will know how close we are to other crew members. Another innovation is the simulated landing. Halfway through the flight, the crew will split up, three of them spending a month inside the cramped landing module with occasional exits onto the specially designed mock planetary surface. It's an important part of the study because when humans get to Mars, they will have to work in spacesuits, and that is very difficult. You get tired. It makes you sweat, it's hard to breathe and difficult to move. So it's very exhausting work and we want to simulate that. It is hoped that the resulting knowledge will be useful in other domains dealing with social isolation. And of course, it will be invaluable for a manned journey to Mars. When you return from a long space flight, you find that it's people on Earth who have changed psychologically while you were away. But you, you are so amazingly pure. You can't pick a flower for the pity of it, because you saw the Earth like you never saw it before. I can imagine the feelings of those flying to Mars when they'll watch their home planet slowly becoming small, disappearing and fading into the distance. They will return altered forever.